Hello, and welcome to the third tutorial on making space rocks with GML in GameMaker. Today we are doing attacks and collisions. Now in our game we're going to have two collision cases. So one is the player colliding with the asteroids, and the other is the player's bullet colliding with the asteroids. We haven't made the bullets yet, so let's concentrate on that first one. So in GameMaker, the way our standard collisions work is that one object checks if its collision mask, or bounding box, is overlapping with that of another object. And this collision mask is something that we set up in the sprite for the object. So let's come over to the ship sprite. Over here, you'll see the collision mask. So by default, it's going to be set to a rectangle that covers the entire sprite. But there are some other options. We can set it to be an ellipse or a diamond. We can also set the mode to be manual so that we can control the dimensions. And we can also make it precise collisions, which basically means the collisions will be pixel perfect. So they'll check for each pixel individually. And you might be wondering, why don't we just make everything precise? Why are there even options for rectangles and ellipses? Well, collisions tend to be among the more costly computations to make in game development. Admittedly, modern computers are extremely fast and serious performance issues are probably not going to happen unless you have several hundred collision checks or more but it's better practice to opt for efficiency when you can. Rectangular collision checks are much more simple computations to make than checking a circle, and certainly more than checking every single pixel, which is what a precise collision check does. So let's just make shapes that approximate the shape of our sprites. So for the ship objects, we could just do a diamond, and we can make the mode manual, and then we can kind of distort this shape so that it matches the ship sprite. So generally speaking, even if the hitbox doesn't cover the entire sprite, especially if it's the player's sprite, the player isn't really going to mind if the tips of the sprite don't cause a collision, because it kind of works in their favour. But what will feel unfair, for example, is if we had a rectangle and the very outsides of the sprite did cause a collision where the player saw that it clearly didn't. So we've set the ship's collision mask, let's go ahead and do the asteroids. So for these, I think a pretty good shape for them is going to be an ellipse. And I might actually just leave that just at the automatic, but you can fit it a little bit better if you want. All right, and now let's actually program the collision event. And this is where we should consider one more thing. Should I have the asteroid objects checking for a collision with the player object, or should I have the player check for a collision with the asteroids? Well, like I said before, collision checks can be costly. So we should go with the option that will result in the fewer number of collision checks. So since there could be tens of asteroids in the room at any one time, but just one player object, it's going to be more efficient for one player to check for a collision with the asteroids. And the same is going to go with the bullets when we get to that. So let's come over to the ship. And there's a few ways that we could do this. There are collision functions that we could use in the step event, but there's also a dedicated event for a collision. So let's go ahead and click colliding with the asteroid. And so, just like the step event, this event gets triggered when there is a collision, when those bounding boxes are intersecting. So now we just have to work out what we want the player to do once we've intersected with an asteroid. So later on we will want to be doing stuff like deducting lives and perhaps deducting the score. But for now I'm just going to make the player destroy itself. And there is a function for this, so we can type instance destroy. And this will destroy whatever instance is calling this function. So if we just run the game and move our player into an asteroid, you can see that it destroys itself. Now let's do the ship with the bullets. So for this, we should go and make a bullet sprite. So let's add a new sprite. I'm going to call this SPR bullet. And I'm going to make this pretty small. So it's just going to be two by two. And I'll come into it and I'm just going to color this white. Okay, and the collision mask for this will just be the entire thing. So we can leave it at the default. Center the origin in the middle center. Let's go ahead and make the object for this bullet, and we will set its sprite index to be the bullet. All right, so firstly, we need to do the logic for creating the bullet, and that is going to be done by the ship. So let's come into the ship, and let's add another key press to this. So I'm just gonna copy one of these, and now for my keyboard button to shoot, I'm going to use the spacebar. All right, and now instead of using check like we have been doing, I'm actually going to use check pressed because I only want to create one bullet when I press the spacebar. If I left it at check, 
then this would actually be true for any time that the player is holding down the spacebar. So you could create 60 bullets per second if you just held down the spacebar for a second. And that's not what we want. We just want to do it when we press the spacebar. So in the case that we do press the spacebar, then we want to create a bullet. So there is a function for this. Instance create. And there's two options here. So you can create it in a layer or at a certain depth. So if you remember in the rooms, we have different layers here. And if you see right here, they actually get assigned a depth like this. So you can make it at a certain depth or you can just put it into an existing layer. And that's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna put it into the instances layer. So we'll use instance create layer. And now where do I want to create this bullet? I wanna do it at the player's location. And then I want it to kind of shoot off in the direction that my player is facing. So I want it to kind of match the image angle of the player. So let's say x, y, because that's the location of the player, right? These are some instance variables that every single object has, as you can tell by the fact that it's green, just like our image angle and sprite width. Then it's asking me what layer I want to put it in. So I want to put it in the instances layer and make sure that you type that with the correct capitalization because it is case sensitive. And then finally, what object do we want to create? A bullet. All right. So this function will create a bullet object but it also returns the ID of the object that it's created. So every instance that gets created in the game has its own unique ID. And with that ID, we can access objects and change things about them. So for instance, I will want to change the direction that the bullet is facing. So to do this, we can actually save the ID that this returns like this. So that way we are making a variable equal to the ID that this function is going to return. And right here, I have declared a new variable, right? This didn't exist before. It's not a built-in variable like these green ones. It's coming up in blue. And normally this will set up a variable that is saved in the object until it gets destroyed. But we don't really have to remember the ID for the bullet. I only really care about it in the instance that it's being created. All I want to do is save its ID so that I can change its direction. So we can make this a temporary variable by putting this var before it. So now it's coming up in yellow. And these temporary variables or local variables, they only exist while the script is running. And at the end of the script, it's discarded from memory. So this is great if you only need to use this variable one time. All right, now I need to get inside this object and change a variable about it. So generally we can change a variable by just writing something like this, and it will change the instance that is running this code but I want to change a different instance. So how do I do that? Well, I can access an instance's variables by typing inst dot and then a variable name like direction. And that means I am now accessing this instance's direction variable, not the player's ship object. So then I can set it to anything that I wanted. So we're just going to make the direction match the image angle. All right, so now we've set its direction, but the bullet at the moment doesn't have any speed. So just like we did for the asteroids, let's add some speed for the bullet. And I want it to be pretty fast, so I'm going to use the value 6. So if we run the game now, and you just see what that looks like. There we go. All right, now let's do the collision event with the asteroids. So just like with the player, let's go add event, collision with the asteroid. So in the event that the bullet collides with the asteroid, we want a couple things to happen. Firstly, we want the bullet itself to be destroyed. So that's easy, let's just do that. And now secondly, we also want to destroy the asteroid. And then, depending on the shape of the asteroid, I want to kind of split it into two. So if it's a huge one, I want to form two medium ones. If it's medium, I want to form two small ones. And for the small one, I might just make it kind of explode with some debris. So firstly, I have to actually get access to the asteroid that I'm colliding with. So unlike before, where we could get access to the ID by creating the instance, we're going to have to use a different tact. And we do have to be careful because we don't want to refer to every single asteroid object. We can't just say obj asteroid dot whatever. I only want the one instance that I'm colliding with. So for this event, it actually has a special keyword that we can use called other. And this, in this very specific case, in this event, so you can only use this in particular places, this will refer to the other instance in the colliding event, so the instance other than the bullet. 
So whatever instance of the asteroid. So that's why we use this keyword. And instead of using a dot, I'm actually going to use what's called a with statement. And this is another way to kind of get access to a different object in the code block. So now whatever I put in between these curly brackets, my asteroid is going to run instead of my bullet. So if I said instance destroy in here, the bullet doesn't call this. The other instance does because it's in a with statement. So be very mindful of what's inside these brackets and what's outside. All right. So we do want the asteroid to destroy itself and then we want it to create two new ones. So now I'm going to have the asteroid check if the sprite index is equal to, and remember we put a double equals here if we're comparing instead of setting a variable, which is where we would put one equals. So if the sprite index is equal to SPR asteroid huge, then we want to create at our XY location in the instances layer, a new asteroid. And I want to make sure that this asteroid is a medium asteroid. And remember, by default, our asteroids were kind of randomly choosing what sprite index they would be. And when we create an object, this event, this create event, will get run immediately. So as soon as this happens, the asteroid will run its create event, choose a random index, and now I am free to kind of overwrite that and set it to be medium. So again, let's just save the new asteroid. So you can call these whatever you want, it doesn't matter. And then we want to set new asteroid dot sprite index. I'm going to set this to be SBR asteroid medium. Okay. But I don't want to just do this once. I actually want to create two. And I could just copy and paste this just like that and it would create two. But another way that we can do this is to use what's called a repeat loop. And it works like this. So we just type repeat and then the number of times you want something to repeat. So I want to create two asteroids. So we just do this, open the curly brackets, and we will wrap all of that code in here. So it will repeat this code twice. All right, so now we want another case. So if it's not huge, we wanna check then if it's medium. So I'm gonna use not if, but else if. And then actually let's just copy this. So this else if means that these two statements are linked together. It will only check this if this one isn't true. So if sprite index is huge, it will run this. Otherwise, else if sprite index is medium, then it will run this and it will create two small ones. All right, and now finally, for our case that it's small, well, I might actually do something a little bit sneaky and no matter what case of the sprite index, so if it's huge, medium, or small, every time I'm actually gonna create some debris at the location of the asteroid in the instances layer. And we haven't made this object yet, so let's go ahead and do that now. So let's create a sprite for it, SPR debris, and this one's going to be even smaller than the bullet, it's just going to be one by one. And we'll just color that in white. And we will create the object for it, obj debris, set the sprite index. And so I'm going to create some of those. And this will just create one of them, but let's do another repeat loop. And let's do it 10 times, because these are very small. All right, so all up, let's have a look at what we're doing. So in the event that we collide with the asteroid, we destroy ourselves. Then we go with the asteroid, have it destroy itself. And then depending on if it's huge or medium, we create two more asteroids. And then we also create some debris. So if we're the smallest asteroid, we're not going to create any more asteroids, but we will still create the debris. But at the moment, when it creates these 10 debris objects, these debris objects aren't going to be doing anything. I want the debris to move off in a random direction and also just fade away. So let's come over to the debris and say when it's created, so just like the asteroid object, let's have it choose a random direction. So we'll use the I random range again between zero and 359. And I'll just set its speed to one so that it's moving off. And also while it is moving, I want it to do something. So in the step event, I want it to gradually fade away. And then once it has faded away completely, I want it to destroy itself. So we can use what's called the image alpha and the alpha of an image is kind of like its transparency. And this goes between a value of one and zero. So one is fully opaque, right? So it's just going to be a completely white square. And then as it gets reduced down to zero, it's going to slowly fade to be partially transparent and then completely invisible. So every frame of the game, I want it to equal itself minus, and then I'm going to use a very small number because I want the fading to be pretty gradual. So again, we could just put minus equals 0.01, right? They mean the same thing. 
And then finally, I just want to check if the image alpha is less than or equal to zero. So I could put just is equal to zero and then say instance destroy, but generally just to cover cases where for some reason this zero has been skipped. Because sometimes you can get bugs in games where a frame gets skipped or something that you haven't taken into account is going to affect the value. So again, it's just kind of good practice to use this instead of just equals a flat number. And I think at the moment we didn't make the player make any debris when it crashes, it just kind of gets destroyed. So let's add that same event to the collision here. So we want the player to also repeat 10 times instance create layer, xy, instances, obj to debris. All right, so now let's give that a run. All right, let's go ahead and shoot this. So it worked, it made the debris and there we go. So it is working. All right. Now, at this point, I want us to consider something. Whenever you're developing your project, you should consider where you can improve performance. And an important way we can do that is ensure the objects on screen are the only ones that exist. And so far we've gotten around our ship and asteroids going outside the room by having them wrap around it, but we haven't done that for the bullets. Which means when they go off screen they still exist in the game. So they're still out there running code and making collision checks, and we don't need them to be doing that. Once they go off screen, they're never going to come back in the game. So we can add an outside room event, which will be triggered when the bullet goes outside the room. So down here in other, outside room, and have them destroy themselves. Alright, so our collisions are looking pretty good. Next time, we're going to be adding things like lives and the score, as well as setting up the different rooms in the game, like the start room, the game over room, and the windscreen. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. That's it for now. I'll see you in the next one.